Welcome to this video, a handover of a Chasson 640 Titanium. Just before we start, a word on the exterior. If you're going to clean your van, try not to use a jet washer. It can damage the seals on the motorhome or a caravan, so best to avoid that. When you open the lockers, the uh, key must be in the vertical position to lock and unlock. Uh, treat them a little bit gently. They can break these sandals. Mine have always been okay, but they can break, so treat them gently. Moving around to the side, you'll see the electrical hookup inlet. Make sure this is firmly shut, otherwise it does flap in the wind when you're driving along. Still on the passenger side and to the right of the electrical inlet, you'll find this locker which contains the consumer unit for the 240 volts uh, with all the fuses and also the 12 volt fuses there. Moving around to the bonnet to unlock it, put the key in, turn it left, that will unlock it, then turn it right and lift the bonnet. There's no catch underneath it you need to release by hand. Now moving on to filling the motor home up with water for habitation. The heater sits inside this cabinet here and you'll find a little yellow lever which must be in the downward position. If you don't do this, all the water leaks out. You should also note on the passenger side beneath the electrical cabinet there is also a freshwater drain valve. Make sure that's shut off. Turn on the control panel and make sure the pump is in the off position. Check all the taps in the motor and make sure they're all closed. And ensure the grey waste tank is closed, so pushing that lever in. Now using a hose pipe or a watering can, fill water in this inlet here. You can monitor the amount of water that's in the van by pressing the water button on the control panel shown here. If you hold this down for a few seconds, the display will stay on instead of going off. Once the water is full, you can now turn on the pump. You may find that the pump goes for a little while and when you open the taps, you get a lot of air in the system. This is normal, it just takes a little while to clear. If you turn on some of the taps, it will sort itself out. We now move on to heating the water. You can heat the water by gas or electric. The controls are here. Note that if you're gonna use gas, you need to make sure that the cover on the outside of the van is off, otherwise you'll get a red flashing light here and an error and the boiler will not start. While we're discussing water, there's also an external shower here, which you just plug in into the side of the van and twist. You can then turn it for how much hot or cold water you want, kind of self-explanatory when you use it. Now just to mention on uh, when you come back and you finish a trip, usually we empty the fresh water here from the tank, stop it smelling, you don't really want to keep fresh water, use the outlet there. Uh, next we enter the grey waste, not on the driveway I hasten to add, in a drain or on site wherever you are. And then we usually empty the heater as well from water. I think it's worth mentioning you should definitely empty this water out in winter months if you don't. It could freeze, it could destroy the heater element. It's a really costly repair, so make sure you empty it. We empty it after every trip, regardless. Now onto the job that nobody likes doing, the toilet. Make sure the flap's closed, it's open here. You see it slide across before you go into the locker and pull the cassette out. If you don't do this, the cassette will jam and destroy it. So make sure the flap is closed. You sometimes have to release the clip and pull up a little bit on the cassette to pull it out. Obviously, go and empty it in the appropriate place. Uh, put a little bit of water back in with it and some fluid and you're good to go. Onto the electrical hookup, you plug it in and a little green light appears there. It's not plugged in at the moment, so you can see it's unplugged. Just walk you quickly through the control panel. This is the habitation battery level. Um, the second button is the cab battery, so the engine battery level. The third button along the bottom is the water level I showed you earlier. You can just tap it to get the water and it will disappear. Um, and then this button at the top here is for the lighting or lighting you do need to have that on for various other sort of functions as well and you've got the pump and the exterior light on the left hand side of the control panel you've got the heater controls turn that up to flat out to get it going and all the lights will flicker that's perfectly normal on this model and then we usually back it off to mode more than 12 it keeps you very warm Bottom switch here is for the accent lights around the uh, sort of palmet area. And then the switch above that is for the blue floor lights. Uh, they're really bright at night, especially at night, and uh, while they're nice, they do keep you awake, so make sure those are switched off. 
we have added some extra lights around the top helmet they're quite nice you can change the colors on them um, you need to change the colors you need an app uh, by a company called Govee that's G-O-V-E-E -E, uh, to let you alter all those colors or just leave them as they are just to wrap up on the electrical side, we do have solar on this fan and there's really nothing you have to do. The solar controller is underneath where that blue cushion is in this picture, uh, but nothing really to do there. It just charges as needed. This fan's got an external filler, so you fill from an LPG pump uh, at the filling station and uh, make sure the gas is off first on the bottle. Uh, this fan also has all the adapters for Europe as well. It's interesting to note for the cooker to work, the uh, hob must be open the lid on the hob and the control panel must be switched on with the light switch on as well or you won't get any gas isolation for the gas is underneath the fridge uh, you can turn off the gas to the fridge and to the cooker here we've never done it but uh, you can if you need to lovely big fridge in this model uh, just hold the power button to power it on usually just leave it in auto and it does its thing but you can change that if you need to to other settings but uh, great fridge in this one Onto the sleeping arrangements, you can see the bed halfway up here with the ladder. You can then make up a second bed underneath, second double, so sleeping four. You should always make sure there are no cushions underneath when you're dropping the bed right down to uh, a single double bed. Um, you can see there's a cushion there, we would remove that normally. On top, you can carry quilts, very thin quilts, but no pillows on top. Don't go to the ceiling with those or you will trip the fuse or blow the motor or something. Also make sure the ch chairs are turned round or are pushed forward enough so they don't snag on the chairs as well. Just generally got to make sure the bed can go down uh, as it needs to be and the table always needs to be down as well. Onto the habitation blinds, uh, pretty standard, pretty standard stuff. Make sure these lock in. We usually pull down the fly net first before uh, taking the other part up. It seems to work better that way. Um, we've got uh, Remo blinds in the front as well and uh, they're a bit of love-hate relationship I love the looks of them they are really useful but they can be a pain to put out so uh, this is the method I use uh, sliding them out with the door open jiggling them as you go along do not pull them too hard because they will fall apart and you'll have to take them all apart to repair them I've done that a couple of times um, it's not fun so yeah jiggle them along and the same on the other side and clip them together with the magnet while we're in the cab, a little conversation around the handbrake on the transit base. Uh, it's a little bit annoying. You've got to keep the button in, pull it to the top, keep your finger on that button. So you can just go right at the top and drop it to the floor and then let go. Don't just drop it down because it won't unhitch and you'll be stuck. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you know how, uh, it's easy. It really is. Onto security, we have three buttons at the front. The red button turns off the internal sensor. It's useful if you want to alarm the van, uh, if you're wild camping, for example, with you still inside of it, or if you carry pets or anything like that and you want to turn that sensor off, that can be good. Uh, the blue one here turns the blue LEDs a little bit dimmer than they are because they're so bright, they are blinding. And the last switch there is for this accessory loop. I think it's worth pointing out that accessory loop switch must be in that position if the loop is not plugged in or the alarm won't arm because it looks like an open contact. So it must be in this position normally unless you are using the accessory loop for some reason. It's also worth mentioning when you arm the alarm, it takes like 25 seconds, the light flashes rapidly and then it should go down to a slower flash uh, telling the alarm is armed. If you've got any other sort of lights that are not slower flashing, it means the door is open or something's wrong with the alarm. It's recommended if you have the tracker key you should keep that separate. Don't put it on the same bunch as the main key because obviously if you lose it the thief gets both items so keep them separate and also you can see the override keys here. We've never had to use the override keys but the one with the white sticker on is not a tracker fob that is a non-starter fob so if the engine won't start for some reason it's been disabled in the app you can't restart it you put this close to the driver cab area and it should start. Uh, the other one is a kind of key dongle that you plug in underneath the dashboard somewhere. Again, I've never used it, but that disables the main alarm system. This is a very good alarm system fit to this van. We've never had a single issue with it in the time we've had it. This particular alarm is fitted with tracker and non-starter and alarm. You will need the MetaTrack app installed on your phone uh, to access it and a valid subscription with MetaTrack for either of the products if that's what you want to do. Hope this video was useful, answered a few questions, and all I can say is happy motorhoming. <laughs>